It's a unique landscape. It's an ancient landscape. It's intriguing. And the communities down here are essential to the vibrancy of this place. It is possibly one of the nicest places on the planet to live. Atlantic Bay, to me, is one of the most amazing bays I've ever seen. It's turquoise blue, you just wouldn't believe it. The changing colours you get over the year, there's always something different to see from the wildlife to the wildflowers. It's that very gentle, soft landscape, places like Frenchman's Creek, moss-laden trees. I'm quite jealous of the guys at Linton and Lynmouth. I love the cliffs. You feel like you're on top of the world. You've got the fantastic Woolacan Beach. You can just get into valleys and you expect a dinosaur just to wander by sort of thing because there's nobody around it looks so untouched. I, I couldn't pick one out because they're all unique in their own right and they all have their own views and their own feelings if you like. My favourite place is Old Harry Rocks which is just phenomenal. Trinance is um, there's something really special about it there's an energy there there's a, a real kind of power there whether you go there in the spring summer autumn winter it just sweeps you off your feet it's incredible. The ocean has an incredible power just to kind of capture people's imagination physically and emotionally inside. Since I've moved down here to Devon, I've really taken to surfing. There are so many little hidden coves which you only find by exploring. Lynmouth is definitely out there, it's absolutely incredible, it's, it's a fantastic little spot. To be honest, I got hooked on ecology, totally hooked on ecology. And I understood the importance of our natural habitats and ecosystems you know, to the future of life. And that's really what drew me in. And the trust gave me the kind of vehicle, if you like, that you could practice that within. I think the tide has turned and the farming community here really got on board nature conservation management. We used Dartmoor ponies as part of our conservation grazing. The ponies are there as some of the best adapted animals to graze those slopes day in, day out, year in, year out. The results are really fruitful. To see the effect that a grazing animal can have on the habitats is stunning here. It's absolutely beautiful. in the middle of a 10-year programme of gorse clearance. We roughly do about four hectares a year. Uh, we have a lot of gorse around this part of the property in North Devon. By cutting it back, you get younger gorse coming up through, and that is much better for the wildlife. So the National Trust is a charity. We rely on donations, we rely on membership. Volunteering for us is absolutely essential. Volunteering for the National Trust isn't just volunteering for the organisation, you're volunteering for the landscape, for the habitats, for the wildlife that supports all of us humans as well. So the southwest coast path is 630 miles long, it starts in Minehead up in Somerset and continues on through to the Studland Peninsula in Dorset. Hundreds of thousands of people walk it every year. It's really important for the local economy. It's a great thrill being able to come to work and knowing that you're doing something to look after this amazing landscape. We recognise the coast path is so crucially important to the local economy. It's probably our biggest asset. I don't know, in a way it's a thread that links the whole of the coastline. It gives access to the coast from wherever you are in the southwest. It takes a tremendous amount of upkeep. During the summer, it's just keeping the paths open. The winter is when we do all our projects. So it's things like, you know, repairing steps that washed out, like drains disappeared, but also constantly improving the coast path, making it more accessible for more people. We have nearly 22 million visitors a year come down to the southwest to enjoy the coast, and 10 million of those come to the National Trust sites themselves. It's so evocative. It creates so many wonderful memories. It looks really timeless, really peaceful. 
that you get that nostalgia feel and people really love their bit of Little England. Last winter we had unprecedented storms. It's a dynamic landscape we're in, the coast changes, sea levels are rising. We're going to have to accept that we've got to adapt around climate change. It's beautiful now, but the reason it's beautiful is because the sea has made it so. The experts tell me that the Golden Cap just behind us in the Iron Age was an extra mile out to sea. The culture and, and archaeology that we find here is absolutely amazing. We've got quite a large number of scheduled ancient monuments. We have Iron Age hill forts, Roman settlements, tin mining, smuggling, shipwrecks. Along here on the World Heritage Site Jurassic Coastline, and only last year we had the Natural History Museum down here and they extracted from the beach a whole ichthyosaur skeleton which they'll take back up to London and study. In 1965, the National Trust launched the Neptune campaign. It's been our longest running and most successful campaign. This year, 2015, is our 50th anniversary. And over the last 50 years, we've raised over 65 million pounds. The funding that Neptune has raised for the National Trust has enabled us to purchase 742 miles of coastline across the whole of the country. And we're very fortunate to have 300 miles of that here in the southwest. It costs us around £3,000 per mile just to manage the existing estate that we have. That's £1 million a year. When the National Trust acquires land, it, it does it to, to hold it and maintain it and keep it forever for everyone in the country. Neptune has been essential in the ability to acquire land here. The land that the National Trust owns in these two parishes, Lansalos and Lanteglos, is sort of around about 2,000 acres and that comprises 30 different acquisitions dating back to just after the First World War. We create places to breathe, not for, just for people, but for nature. Being on the coast, to me, it's a, it's a light and how it changes just from almost one minute to the next. Getting back to nature and, and getting close to the earth and just getting out and enjoying some fresh air, you know, people really, really value it. I get life from it, I get energy from it, I sustain myself by getting outside. It just energises you, recharges you. I can just come over the hill, look at the sea, and just straight away, I just feel the calmness just flooding back into myself. There is nothing more wonderful than breathing clean sea air. The smell of salt and ozone, it just does you good. Being in the sea and you know, with your friends out there and just having a really great time can really change you as a person. It's a unique experience. You know, when I'm up country in places like London, I miss the horizon. It's just, you know, you don't get it like you do here. You know, I look after one of the most amazing places I think in the world. It's incredibly beautiful and I'm really passionate about it and one of the things that really drives me is about sort of getting that passion within other people. Even just sitting here on this stunning day in winter, the sea pounding away, it, it makes me realise actually what my job was all about, you know, what, why we do what we do to protect these stunning places. 
The National Trust is here to do something that no other organisation or government agency is able to do. We own this land forever, we, you know, we can't sell it. Our core purpose is to look after these special places forever for the benefit of everyone.